Well, this morning we're taking a closer look at one of Perth's most iconic and historic suburbs, Fremantle. We'll have a look at what's happening in our port city right now, as well as its future plans. And we begin with some big changes at Fremantle Hospital. With Fiona Stanley now up and running, Fremantle is making the transition to a smaller, specialised provider. The local business owners say the change has hit them hard. Think coffee, think Frio. It's Perth's original cappuccino strip, but locals say their businesses are running out of steam. We used to probably get about 30 to 40 doctors and nurses and that from the hospital uh, in before, I guess, February 3rd, and suddenly it just stopped overnight. Chris Ford's cafe is opposite Fremantle Hospital, which used to have 450 beds and an emergency department. Now it's been downsized by a third to 300 beds, focusing on aged care, mental health, rehab and specialist surgery. When Fiona Stanley uh, came online, uh, Fremantle Hospital has lost 1,900 jobs and that's the real kicker for the local businesses. They're people that would buy their lunch, buy coffees every day and they're not there anymore. That's really damaging the local economy. The cost to the Fremantle economy is estimated at $300 million every year. Probably about a three or $400 drop in our lunch trade every day. Yeah. Has that hurt you guys? Oh, absolutely. Um, I've had to let go of a couple of girls. Uh, cut back shifts, work longer hours, so yeah, no, it's definitely hurting us. And while profits are dropping, tenants are still paying high rent, with many small business owners locked into long-term contracts that were set when trade was booming. The Fremantle Chamber of Commerce says the hospital workers must be replaced. It's calling on the state government to deliver on its 2012 promise to move the Department of Housing to the port city. Those employees have yet to be replaced or thought about being replaced. So um, that has changed the, the, I guess, the business landscape for a number of people that have been in, you know, within that region of Fremantle for a long time. The government says it's still considering its options and can't confirm when or if the move will happen. For now, Fremantle Hospital says it remains the area's biggest employer. A range of new services will come online in the next few months, hopefully boosting staff and visitor levels. We keep getting told different times. Originally we were told March, now it's July, it keeps getting pushed back. So I don't know when it's going to be, but yeah, we just need to keep our head above water until then. Jerry DeMassey, Today, Perth News. And to address some of those concerns of business owners in Fremantle, I'm joined now by the Executive Director of Fremantle Hospital, Dr David Blythe. Dr Blythe, good morning to you. Thanks for your time. Morning. Pleasure to be here. We're talking quite a large number of jobs here, about 2,000. Yes, we have had some um, reductions in staff numbers since the Fiona Stanley Hospital opened, but it's important to know that many of those staff have actually relocated, so those jobs aren't gone. And our, uh, our new staffing profile is in line with our new role as a specialist hospital, which has is, which is long been advertised and which we're looking forward to very much. I understand the hospital has been through a pretty extensive community awareness campaign about the changes that are happening. What's been the reaction from locals there yeah. and has any of that surprised you? We did have an extensive community campaign. We had a lot of um, community meetings with local groups and stakeholders uh, before the Fiona Stanley Hospital opened, which I conducted personally. We had an extensive mail-out campaign. We've had two letter drops of almost 100,000 uh, letters to local residents and businesses. Um, so people have been uh, hopefully provided with sufficient information. The reaction from local residents has been, um, has been mixed. Obviously, there's a lot of concern about the changing role of the hospitals. But the reactions I've had have been that when people are provided with sufficient information about the, the new role of Fremantle, they've, uh, they've accepted that and, and are looking forward to our, our new delivery of our new suite of services. Well, some business owners down there say they are experiencing up to a 20% downturn. Do you expect that to change or is that the future for them? The hospital's role is still in a, in a bit of a state of flux, so we're, we're very busy in our medical wards, our mental health wards and our aged care and rehabilitation wards. We've still got some capacity to do a little bit more activity on the surgical side of things. And when our new day admission centre opens um, in the near future, we're hoping that our surgical activity will pick up um, and that um, you know, the, there'll be more activity, particularly in, on those surgical beds. So we're looking forward to a, um, uh, an increased activity in surgery particularly. Um, so I would hope that brings perhaps a little more, a little more traffic to the, to the local businesses. I notice you've got a, a new 50-bed day admission centre due to open 
in June. Is that on track to open in June? Yes, that is on track to open in June, and it's one of a one of a number of um, of new services that are uh, operating or beginning to operate over the next few months. Our hand surgery service, which is a new service, started yesterday, and we've got a couple of services which were previously off-site um, but associated with the Fremont Hospital. So there's a rehabilitant service which was in Moss Street, and that's coming back on board um, at the Fremantle campus in a few months' time. And um, we've got an older, older adult mental health unit, which is again coming back to the Fremantle campus. So we are bringing a little bit more activity in those areas back to the hospital campus. All right, Dr. David White, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you for your time this morning.